Mm. And you were you mentioned earlier that you're a huge like computer science nerd. Um, personally, I didn't have the option to take computer science courses in high school. I got that like my first exposure to any kind of coding was in university for my physics lab course where we had to model different uh, experiments. But do you think that like in the near future that will become like a very normal thing to take like a computer science class in like grade eight, grade seven? I hope. So. I mean, I, I'm just like you. The first computer science class I took was freshman year of university. I, I didn't mm-hmm. have any head starts there. Um, in some sense, having a good math background is like enough to, like, kind of let you run with it there. But the reason I really hope that we do see that is I think one of the best ways of getting people into math is through programming. Um, and mm-hmm. just I'm biased by living in Silicon Valley, but the number of people I know who started by disliking math, found programming started to like math because of what it was letting them do with programming. Like it's staggering mm-hmm. just how mm-hmm. common a trajectory that is um, in a way that feels like, wow, we could weaponize this in order to <laughs> like get more people learning math if we just mm-hmm. tucked it a little bit earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I had one friend who we were like getting dinner at some point. And it was like the cutest moment where he's like, Grant, I got to tell you, I, you know, I just found out about the arctan function and like, <laughs> and I'm like, tell me more. Like, uh, is there some inside joke or meme that I'm not getting? Like, you know, what is this? and he just meant the function. He just meant the existence of like the inverse tan function because for like a game that he was programming, he just needed to convert between slope and angle. Um, and it's like the tool to do that. Uh, I'm like, that's, imagine if all that's, students wow. had that reaction to like learning about inverse trigonometric functions. <laughs> they were like, yeah. they didn't just tolerate it, but they actively loved the thing that it was doing. Um, yeah. I think because a big and, part of it is because it helped them do what they wanted to do, right? Because a lot of times, yes. because a lot of times with math, unfortunately, a lot of people don't want to learn it, right? They're just like, oh, it's just something I have to do in high school, so I'm just gonna do it. Or, it, it's not that they don't want to, but it's it there um there's no like apparent use for it, right? Like you're learning these waves, and it's just like, okay. Exactly, and then in computer science- I guess I know this now. And then in computer (laughs) science, it's literally a direct use of mathematics. And I think something even better that computer science does is teaches you, you know, logic. Because I think that is the most important thing, just like basic programming Mm -hmm. logic, especially with like, you know, comps, uh, like like pretty complicated, like recursive algorithms, uh, or any type of modeling functions or, or really anything with that you do in like complex coding is so is so rooted in mathematics because of logic and that's i think what you know inspires a lot of people to like math after that you know okay well a lot of points there i mean so you you said one of the benefits is that it's like you've got this direct utility wholly agree however i do think that it's very important to not limit yourself only to the utility motive of math mm-hmm. and to like also realize that the beauty motive um, is both very real and also um, lets you start to learn some math where the utility is quite delayed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, I think it's it's going to be hard to immediately motivate, uh, I don't know, like um, combinatorics, let's just say, for example, and like how to count stuff. Because maybe you're doing some probability problems and it comes up and you're like want to, you know, solve what the best poker hand is. And you, you could mm-hmm. come up with examples. The problem is if you're leaning on that as the only motive, this is a recipe for bad word problems that show up in math textbooks where it's like, trying to be applied but it's so obviously a thing the student's never going to encounter in the real world they're like why would i actually be like calculating this probability for balls coming out of urns that are colored in certain ways that it, yeah. it's a little bit self-defeating um so it's very important i think to like acknowledge that sometimes the motive for the people originally studying it was because of the puzzle in and of itself like the the colliding blocks calculating pi thing that you brought up earlier right i think that's a very powerful way to get people to start learning about like momentum transfer and energy and like phase spaces. But it's it's not because of like the direct application there, like the, the bulb of curiosity came from something else. So you don't you don't want to sacrifice one of the tools just because the application one is so powerful. Um, mm-hmm. On the other one, you were saying about how computer science has this value of like teaching you logic. One of the things I most love about it is that it's like you versus the compiler mm-hmm. and you have to own up to the fact <laughs> yeah. when yeah. like your logic was not sound. It, you, because you, for that matter, like good essay writing teaches you logic too, and like debate teaches you logic, and there's lots of things mm-hmm. that teach you good logical rigorous thinking. But when you're a student and you write an essay that's making a case for something, and the grader disagrees with it or they point out logical flaws, 
there's always room in your mind to say, yeah, but they didn't understand, right? They didn't mm -hmm. really understand what I was getting mm -hmm. at. Mm -hmm. But when it's you versus the compiler, you just have to own up to the fact that like, you can't really blame the compiler for the fact that it's not running. Like mm -hmm. it set yeah. up the rule pretty <laughs> clearly. Like you have to fix a problem in your code um, in a way that doesn't really happen in, in other domains. And the immediate feedback of that, I think is what can make it so much more powerful than other domains that are equally like rigorous. Like philosophy would be another one. Like we should maybe teach philosophy more in high school because of what mm -hmm. it does for rigorous thinking. But it doesn't have it doesn't have a compiler in the same way. There's, mm -hmm. So there's too much room for um, uh, plausible misunderstanding on the part of your critic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Especially with that compiler I'm... there, right? The, the, there's always the option to immediately check if you're right yes. or wrong and stuff like that. And you know, and and I think that's that right there is like the biggest advantage of something like that. And also most people, I think, or at least that I see, or at least my friends who are in computer science, most computer or people who are in computer science are in some way very deeply interested in mathematics. I think that's now a more common thing that... Well, I think that's unavoidable though. Yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, I guess that, that was also brought up. But now it's not only that computer science is bringing people to math, it's also that, you know, because I guess a lot of people are learning computer science in high school now, which is really helpful, that while they're learning it alongside math, it's helping their knowledge and understanding in both. So, you know, it's kind of doing it better for, for, for both fields. So I think now a lot of computer scientists are also like, you know, part mathematicians. That's mm. good. <laughs> and Grant, you also brought up the, uh, like the beauty factor versus the application factor. And I, I agree that like, you know, both are obviously very, very important but I, I think the application factor is very good as like as like an introduction to get someone into math right you, you show them like oh this is what you can use all of these tools for mm -hmm. and then that just gets them like into the slippery slope and then once they get in they they really get to see like the beauty factor of math it it makes them it makes it easier to hold off on the application factor and to just like enjoy the math for what it is. And then when the application comes in, it just makes it that much sweeter. You know, mm -hmm. all that all that time you spent trying to rigorously like understand what's actually going on. And then you're kind of left in the dark and then suddenly you see the light and it's just like, wow, this is this feels nice. <laughs> I Yeah, when, when it's done well, that's definitely the, the best way. I guess it's the, the thing that I want to push back against is whatever the underlying cause of bad word problems is, because I think they come from a good intention, which is a desire right. to keep things applied. Um, but if that's the dictum handed down from on high, like you have to show how these things are applied. Otherwise, like <laughs> it won't motivate the students at all. Like what you say is absolutely true. If you can start off with a good motivation, there's nothing better as an introduction. Um, but realizing that doing that 80% is sometimes worse than nothing uh, is not always acknowledged. <laughs>